Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 539, minimum time difference. Given a list of 24 hour clock time points in hour hour minute minute format, return the minimum minutes difference between two any two time points in the list. So if we were given the time, you know, midnight, one minute before midnight and midnight, we should be returning zero because the minimum difference between these two is zero. Now, this problem isn't particularly difficult. The approach that we want to take here is simply to not work with strings, but we want to work with, you know, minutes and we'll use it as the total number of minutes from midnight. So we can standardize all of our, um, you know, inputs here. So what we want to do is we want to take the hours of a current, you know, string. We want to multiply that by 60 and then add whatever the minutes is, right? And that way we'll normalize it and we'll do that for every element in our list here. Then what we want to do is once we've done that, so for this value, let's just say it's going to be, you know, um, zero and then, oh boy, what is uh, 23 times 60? That's, um, and then plus 59. Okay, so it's going to be 1439 and we're looking at zero here. Now what we want to do is simply sort this list because we want elements to be next to each other in a sorted order. That way two elements that are next to each other will be like, uh, the distance will be as small as possible between them. And what we want to do is check all possible distances between two elements and check whether or not um, you know we have a solution there. And remember that we need to watch out for one edge case, which is that this zero should also be compared to the previous value here. So we need to check that and make sure we don't accidentally, you know, do undo that combination because that is a valid um, combination that we need to check. So that's the solution here that we want to go with. And we're going to keep track of the minimum distance we've seen and simply return that. So remember, the first thing that we're going to do is convert these strings into the, I guess, minutes past midnight. We're going to sort the array and then we're simply going to take the difference between two consecutive pairs and try to find whatever the minimum difference is. So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, once we go into the code editor and you actually see what we're going to do, it should start making a lot more sense. So let's go to the code editor. Back in the code editor, let's write the code. Remember that we need to change time points from being strings into integers representing the minutes past midnight. So we're going to say for i time in enumerate time points uh, time points we're gonna say the hours and the minutes is gonna be time dot split and we're gonna split on the colon and now we're gonna say minutes past midnight is gonna equal to the integer representation of the hours times 60 plus the int of minutes and now what we're going to do is we're going to say time points of i. So we're going to overwrite the original array and we're going to say minutes past midnight. So this assumes that you can overwrite the original array. If not, you can just create an empty array and then just append to it. Um, I'm just going to overwrite it here. It shouldn't really matter. You can ask your interviewer if you can do this. If not, just create a new array. It's not a big deal. Uh, now what we want to do that we've transformed our array to be the integer values. We want to sort our time points. So we're going to say time points dot sort. And what we need to do now is we need to set up our result. So we're going to say res. And here we need to account for the fact that once we sort, uh, remember how I said we had to handle the wraparound, right? We had that case where we had something like 0, and then we had 1439. And we need to handle the wraparound of 1439 and 1. And if we simply did the subtraction, we would get, you know, the wrong value because we would get a minus value and actually we need the the difference is actually only one minute between midnight because midnight is technically 1440 but since we're representing it minutes since midnight then we need to consider it as zero since everything is normalized that way so we need to you know return reality at 1440 minus 13, uh, 1439 to return one when we have you know zero and you know, one minute before midnight instead of, you know, zero minus this, in which case we would get the wrong answer. So we have to normalize for that um, as our initial value. So we're going to do that in the beginning to make sure that um, 
we account for that wraparound that we need to do for the last element and the first element. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to say the total number of minutes in a day uh, plus time points of zero minus time point. So the last element here. And this is going to handle us actually taking care of that first and last element and making sure that our value doesn't actually come back negative. So that's why we're adding in the 1440 to account for the fact that the time points of minus one is obviously going to be greater than the time points of zero. Uh, so we need to add that 1440 to basically flip it back into the positive um, instead of having a negative number, which obviously isn't possible. So now what we need to do is just look over all the pairwise um, times and basically calculate our minimum here. So we're going to say for i in range starting from one because we're going to start at index one and then look back. We're going to say and then len time points time points and we're going to say res is going to be the minimum of the current res or time points of i minus time points of whoops i minus one so we're just looking back to the previous element and calculating the difference and trying to update our result if we can and then at the end all we have to do is return our result and we should have our solution here so let's submit this and we see that it works. So what is our time complexity? Well, going through our time points and calculating the uh, minutes past midnight is going to be a big O of N operation, right? Because we have to go through the entirety of time points and make those computations. Then what's going to happen is we do a sort. So this is going to be a, you know, N log N operation. And then what we do next is we go over time points again. And then for each element, we try to do some computation. So we can see that the most dominant operation here is going to be the sort. So asymptotically, our algorithm is just going to be n log n. And for the space complexity, well, since we didn't actually create uh, any new space here to store our result, we simply overrid the original array. We can think of it as you know constant space because we're just overwriting the original array. But you may not be allowed to do this in your interview. Your interviewer might say, okay, don't overwrite the original array. So we're gonna say big O of one, if not, if overriding input, otherwise you're gonna to have to create an array of length time points to basically um, store these minutes past midnight. So we can consider it as big O of N if we're not allowed to override that original input. So that's how you solve this problem. Not really a complicated one. I think the, the only tricky bit here is just handling that edge case where you have to deal with the wraparound between the first element and the last element and making sure that your difference is not negative. Obviously, we're doing time points of i minus time points of i minus one. So, you know, if we tried to do that subtraction, then obviously the last element would be bigger than the first one and we get a negative value. So that's why we need to add in the 1440 to basically account for that and then flip it back to the positive and give us the actual correct um, minutes that we need as the proper difference. So once you handle this, the rest of it's really straightforward. You're just looking at all the, the pairwise uh, times and trying to find the smallest difference possible. So that's gonna be how you solve this problem. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. If there's any videos or topics you'd like me to make, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to get back to you and make the videos. And in the meantime, happy coding and bye.